Hey, welcome everybody. Uh, whoever shows up, I know I didn't announce this. Um, so if someone shows up, great. If not, uh, no problem. I kind of wanted to talk about a few things. Um, so one is that we've revamped, or basically just reorganized our uh, CWA Academy site. So that is basically is designed now to better educate you, right? So for people who want to, um, like, basically, we keep track of you so you can uh, actually progress from the fundamentals of catch wrestling all the way to intermediate and more advanced catch wrestling. So that's all on our uh, CWA Academy page. You can easily find that through our website, catchwrestlingalliance.com. At the top, you can just see uh, where it'll say CWA Academy. Um, we also got a lot of great things going on there. Uh, we're going to be adding more uh, courses and stuff uh, actually within the next few days. Uh, we're just finishing up on a few things. We just did release this week. Uh, we didn't really announce it, but we, re we released a strength training for catch wrestling program. I think we should do um, uh, a video with the instructor. So it's my strength and conditioning coach, um, Brooks Krause. Um, he's compiled uh, a set of different exercises that uh, most efficiently helps with catch wrestling in particular or, like, or specifically. So that's in that course that's on uh, that's live on our uh, CWA Academy already. Uh, so if anybody's interested, that's there. Also, we have uh, channel memberships. So some of those uh, uh, videos are also on our membership side of the YouTube channel. So that's all there. Okay, so what I want to talk about today is a, kind of like a, a mix of MMA stuff. But uh, recently I've mentioned Sanda or Chinese kickboxing uh, on a few videos and you guys really re uh, responded to that. Uh, some people were asking for more Sanda topics. Um, so something that kind of came up uh, just a day ago is that my coach or my Sanda coach in China, um, his name is Guan Jianmin, right? So um, he was actually the coach or one of the top coaches for uh, professional Sanda in China. Uh, and so he often would lead or he would be the head coach of the team that would go compete against, say, like um, they, they went to Thailand to compete against uh, uh, professional Muay Thai fighters. Uh, they even came to Las Vegas to fight against uh, professional boxers. Um, anyway, so quite often whenever there's some international event, that's when Coach Guan would be the head coach. And they're really successful when he was the head coach. And he's just a, a brilliant, um, just like a, a brilliant coach, a brilliant um, uh, person who's like, great with strategy. Um, so... He hadn't really been coaching Sanda for the past few years, but all of a sudden he uh, is coming out talking about it. So I think there's uh, something that might kind of be related um, to catch wrestling and also to MMA in particular. So uh, one of the questions they were asking him is that um, since Sanda has kind of the wrestling aspect to it, um, should like that be the main thing or like should that be the highest percentage of the focus for a Sanda practitioner and um, Coach Guan actually felt that it shouldn't be the the main thing they talk about because ultimately it's kind of like a kickboxing style so his point of view was that yeah you definitely really need to be heavy on the striking and getting good at that and then mixing in the grappling but uh, the other thing he said was that if it gets too wrestling heavy then why not have a wrestling match and that kind of uh, brings me to the whole point of MMA where uh, in the past it, it seemed more a little bit more about like style versus style um, but nowadays a lot of the people who are getting picked up uh, for professional MMA um, are really striking heavy, you know, like people who are uh, doing like a lot of kickboxing, a lot of boxing. Um, uh, that, and that's kind of like the, the person who's selling the tickets kind of where it's like 
Uh, they definitely want to uh, sell us like the pay-per-view where there could be um, a potential knockout. Like the, so um, that could be a little bit more for the casual fan. I know a lot of people who might be watching this are probably uh, more into the, the, like the technique or the whole technical aspect of grappling. Um, so you might not necessarily be that person who's always yelling uh, for the ref to stand them up right if they're on the ground. Um, but um, that's kind of where it's heading in a way to uh, probably it's just more successful for them, like financially, because uh, it is kind of happening in both sides, like um, one, uh, UFC and also 1FC. Um, you are seeing, like in Asia, a lot of really great strikers. So a lot of people who are at the, at the top levels of these divisions, a lot of them do have a Sanda background or a really good Muay Thai background. Uh, you're seeing a lot of that. Uh, sometimes you, these people are able to get some submissions, um, but you, you, we're, they're highlighting a lot, uh, a lot of the, the knockout finishes, right? And uh, they also have divisions where it's only Muay Thai or only kickboxing divisions as well. So the, in a way, so it's like they offer the MMA as its own like style, uh, and then they offer the pure kickboxing styles and one championship has also had uh, pure grappling matches too. I think they did one with uh, Shinya Aoki and Gary Tannen. Um, so they'll probably do more. I mean, because grappling itself is like, really uh, establishing itself as a standalone thing that uh, people want to see. So yeah, I mean, would like to hear your thoughts on that where it's like nowadays since... Um, the big companies are really trying to promote like these knockout artists and stuff. Even if you do have a really good striking background, um, if you, you know, like they, you might be up against someone who, you know, he might be good at wrestling or might be good at grappling and um, they, it might never get to the whole grappling aspect or if, you know, like, so we, I, I, I didn't, like, before we started, I didn't check the statistics right now about, like, what's the majority of the finishes. If anybody knows, they can totally chime in. Um, uh, there's no um, old catch wrestling match of Daniel Cormier. I mean, you can, uh, you can find some, like, um, his old, like, college stuff. Um, so I, I don't know where to find it. I mean, I've seen it. Uh, maybe we can try to post some of the links later and kind of trying to look for it. Uh, we can definitely look for it. Um, yeah, any other questions or any other thoughts about, like, does MMA really prove, like, which style, especially nowadays, since it's not necessarily style versus style anymore. I mean, you, you, you have grapplers who are practicing uh, striking, whether it be boxing or uh, Muay Thai or even Sanda. Um, I personally believe that Sanda is probably the best style for MMA, and we're starting to see a little bit more of that. Uh, say, like, we have John Wei Li, who is uh, one of the women's divisions champions uh, in one championship. Um, we have guys who were um, in several different weight divisions uh, who came from Sanda backgrounds. Also, another woman over there, Priscilla Kertati, she's an uh, Indonesian Sanda champion. So they're kind of comfortable when someone tries to clinch up with them. Um, so they can either take them down or keep it standing so they can continue striking. So that's kind of uh, one of the things I wanted to bring up so we can hear anybody's thoughts. Uh, the other thing would be, say, like these style versus style things. A long time ago, before Frank Gotcha died, he wrote in his book that a lot of these style versus style things, uh, he considered them more of like a freak show type things where... It doesn't necessarily prove who's the better fighter. Uh, it just proves that uh, marketers can make money off of the, the, the public, right? So uh, he had that point of view. So this is arguably the, one of the greatest catch wrestlers of all time. They're one of the greatest American wrestlers of all time. Uh, was really not feeling these whole uh, MMA type vibe. Um, um, so, I mean, what are some of your guys' thoughts about that? I mean, does, especially modern MMA, does that, can that really prove, um, or is there some kind of pure 
pure grappler who's not going to throw a punch or whatever um, that can really dominate. I don't know. Um, let me see. Riz is asking about um, Daniel Cormier's. Uh, sorry, if anybody knows, if anybody can answer his question, like, right, uh, if you know where these old Daniel Cormier matches are, go ahead and give him the, him or her the, the link. Um, let me see. Yes, yeah, I think, say, like, uh, so we just have to com comment where MMA is a really great, I mean, cat dressing is a really great style for MMA. I totally agree. It really, um, like, has that top-down approach, and that's how an MMA match starts, right? Because um, you do have that whole striking to overcome. Um, so that's why I say, like, Samba and catch wrestling in particular, uh, they have that real advantage, right? Where it's like, you start standing, you can be striking, um, try to get it down really quickly. If you get it down, you really want to be the person on top because, like, say if you're trying... A submission from underneath it'll be hard um, you'll be in a bad situation if it if you're not successful right so if you try an arm bar from the bottom and the person stacks you they will get their arm out then they're gonna be uh, throwing elbows at your face right so um, it's not necessarily the best place to be or even say like in Asia uh, they can still throw knees to the down opponent right um, so uh, it's really not the ideal place to be, so the catch wrestling point of view is better in that respect, where it's like, uh, if you take someone down, you want to try your best to be on top. If you get reversed, get swept, right, uh, uh, and you're on bottom, our, our instinct is to get out from being underneath. Uh, so that's, that's, like, catch wrestling is full of those types of techniques where you do want to get out from underneath. Uh, this kind of reminds me of one of the instances where we have a good wrestler, Tyrone Woodley, up against uh, someone who was not in the same division, right, Usman. And um, instead of using some wrestling when Usman got him down, he sat there, right? Uh, granted, I'm sure Usman was putting a lot of pressure on him, but it almost seemed like Woodley, because he's, he's a recent uh, jiu-jitsu black belt, um, he, uh, I don't know if he was trying to uh, do some kind of reversal from the bottom or whatever. Um, I don't know what he was thinking, but he didn't really have any urgency or um, like attempt to get up from the bottom. And I think that was like the main reason why he lost, right? Um, so catch wrestling, if, if you don't, and so like, basically that's not, that's not the whole idea of catch wrestling, right? So uh, if you can kind of just stick to that whole wrestling aspect, I mean, there's, and there's all these people who might be doing both, you know, we, you know, like you might love jujitsu and catch wrestling, you might practice both, uh, but quite often you're going to see, especially like in an MMA situation, you're definitely not going to want to stay on the bottom. Uh, if someone puts you on the bottom, you want to try your best to get out and reverse that situation. Um, it's probably not going to be worth it to try to uh, finish some submission attempt uh, from the bottom. It's like I said earlier, it's like if they escape, all of a sudden you're, you're pinned and they're going to be elbowing you, kneeing you, maybe setting up their own uh, submission um, to your submission. So, um, yeah, the, the catch wrestling is really the way to go, in my opinion. Um, of course, I mean, that would be my opinion, right? Because uh, I'm a big proponent for catch wrestling. But uh, anybody else have any other thoughts? You can uh, go ahead and feel free to ask. Um, so besides that, so then the whole question about this, uh, this video is that like, does, especially modern day MMA, where a lot of people are, are truly kind of mixing things up. Uh, and some of the MMA people that I work with, um, even some of the MMA schools, um, they're really heavy on striking. I mean, really heavy on striking and where they'll put in into a MMA fight, someone who's like white belt in jujitsu level just so they can get the, uh, the, like the MMA competition experience, right? Um, that's, that's, um, that's kind of one of the things where it's like, as, as, and, and you'll see it quite often where it's like a lot of people who aren't, aren't, uh, like jujitsu black belts or whatever, 
they're they're competing in MMA, right? So people with blue belts and purple belts, I mean, still competing and doing well. Um, so especially if they're good at striking, right? They can punch their way through or kick their way through. Um, so um, anybody have uh, any more thoughts? So one person was asking about where to train in Bolivia. Uh, man, invite me down there. I mean, I can speak Spanish, so, <laughs> so uh, I'd be happy to go. Um, uh, but if there's no, there's no one that I know in Bolivia, you can also, in the meantime, sounds like you're writing in English, so uh, you can always take our online course at CWA Academy. Um, you can go through our website. Uh, so you can start with the catch wrestling fundamentals there, right? And then we can, so the other thing about the Catch Wrestling Alliance Academy is that uh, a lot of people are asking about being affiliated with us. We want to make sure that there is like higher standards for catch wrestling. So you do have to complete our fundamentals courses first, right? Um, New York. Um, hmm, I'd have to check because I'm really close to my good friend in uh, South Carolina. I know that's far from, from New York, right? Um, I'll have to double check because I, I do know someone uh, in Boston. I know that's already <laughs> over a, it's like a far away. So uh, let's see if I can't find anybody closer uh, like in the meantime. Um, yep. Any more questions? No? All right, we'll keep on asking. Uh, probably uh, stick around for like another minute or so. Uh, yeah, so according to my son, the coach, in his recent interview, um, he prefers, um, uh, like, if you want to do something that's really heavy on grappling, do a grappling match, right? If you want to show who's the better uh, striker or whatever, uh, then you can focus more on that. So that's why he was saying, like, even Sanda should, shouldn't go completely grappling. So Sanda, Sanda kickboxing, right? Um, let me see. So, who's my favorite? Uh, hmm, my favorite MMA catch wrestler. Um, I don't. Uh, I have to think about that MMA catch wrestler. That, that's the thing. It's like, um, and that's kind of the point of this video, where it's like, um, is uh, someone who has like a wrestling background, if they're going in punching and kicking. Um, is that uh, the best way to prove, or does that really prove who's the better catch wrestler? That's the thing. So, um, I do, there's several fighters that I like, um, but it seems like MMA is becoming more of this, this uh, striking oriented style. So, um, I do like a lot of the Sanda fighters who are like in one championship, um, who can really mix, um, or can really take down someone, stay on top. Um, really, um, uh, like, kind of mix up the, the striking with the takedowns and, and the, the domination. Um, so a bunch of those people aren't necessarily catch wrestlers, but they have, like, kind of that same spirit. So a lot of the people from the Philippines, the, was it Team Lakay, they're, uh, they're also putting out uh, some pretty tough guys that, that can really hit hard, uh, take people down, um, we're also seeing um, uh, yeah, some of the women who are coming up. Um, there's actually like two, well, there's one guy in UFC, I forgot his name, and then also um, there's actually two women. So it's not just John Wei Lee. Um, and um, there's another woman, I keep on forgetting her name. They don't, they don't, <laughs> they don't have her fight as much, but I think she's, uh, she still has a winning record. All right, any other uh, questions? Go for it. Okay, so I um, just want to let you guys know, so we have a lot more things coming up for you. Um, we have, again, like more programs coming out through our CWA Academy. Also, too, uh, you can join this channel. That really helps us out. Um, let me see. What would you say is the safest way to stand up in MMA, having your opponent in your clothes guard? Um, a lot of times you can... 
Uh, let me go ahead. Actually, I didn't get a chance to finish reading that before it faded away. So what would you say is the safest way to stand up in MMA from having an opponent in your closed guard using catch wrestling? Okay, this is a, a pretty good, pretty easy, or not easy one, but I mean, this is definitely something you have to practice. Uh, the, this is pretty successful uh, with the students that I've, I've worked with. Um, also, too, this can be, you can think of this as something you can do uh, against an opponent that's larger than you. So uh, if you're rolling with someone larger, or say like if you're a woman and you're rolling with a larger person and they, they roll you back onto your back, right? So uh, again, yeah, open the guard. Make sure you have an overhook, right? You can also hang onto the head if you want, but then the next thing would be is a, uh, let's see, how would you say though? So overhook side, you can put that foot down, right, onto the mat, right? And then you would, almost like a, that movement similar to what jiu-jitsu people call like the technical stand-up. So even though you're on, you might be on your back, you can still use the same side, the same side foot, right, to kind of push, get, get a little bit of space um, between you and the ground, and then swing your opposite leg back, kind of like similar to that technical stand-up aspect, but you still have that overhook, so you can still have a little bit of control over that, that person, like not really just like charging and, and uh, getting on top of you. So you can still like start off with the overhook on the arm, you can kind of start off with the head, and then as you start to swing your this leg back out from underneath, you can switch the grip from this side of the head, and then also then you can start coming around to even almost like a, a quarter Nelson position. Right, that would be actually one of the most ideal things. And later, uh, you can see where it's like, if you can get out and you can start going for that quarter Nelson position, you can actually reach around for the chin whip kind of position, or the chin strap, and then you can turn their head and you can start getting a, um, a neck crank. Right, So that can, uh, that can set up uh, a way you can roll, over, roll them over, you can end up pinning them, right, for an MMA situation, as long as you're on top, You've trapped them. You can uh, set up your uh, even like darts chokes. Uh, you can start throwing uh, your elbows and stuff. Uh, so the question was like for someone who wants to do MMA, which style of kickboxing is or which style striking style is better? Um, again, like my personal belief is it's Sanda, right? Chinese kickboxing. Um, that is the style it's not so well known but it is finally kind of becoming um, more well known it is the chinese kickboxing style that you can think is kind of similar to muay thai in that um, it's still a strong striking style but it has a lot of wrestling in it stand-up wrestling so a lot of takedowns um, uh, a lot of catching of different kicks um, um, that is really the, I would say, like the ideal style for MMA, um, or like one of the ideal base styles, right? So then uh, catch wrestling just blends perfectly with that one because it has the same philosophy, but Sanda would have the striking aspect. So um, the, the only thing now, too, right, <laughs> is like finding a great Sanda coach. I personally, I went, I went to China to train a long time ago, so I, I went to Beijing uh, Sports University. Right now, um, the national uh, Sanda team of China, they train in a different uh, a different city or different uh, province. So they're not in Beijing, they're in uh, this place called uh, Sanxi. So it's like where, uh, it's, I think they're in that, that actual city called Xi'an. So that is where, um, if you guys have Heard of that where they had the terracotta soldiers and all that where they unearthed all these uh, countless statues and stuff uh, from ancient times um, that is in that sports university of that that uh, city that's where the national samba team trains um, and you can go train you can basically i think you uh, you uh, file or you fill out some kind of application and i've seen a lot of people from other countries uh, go to train there they stay there for a while, um, kind of like just like how I did, but I, I was at Beijing. Um, let me see. Oh yeah, well thanks for watching. Right. Uh, yeah. So, um, but speaking of that style, like the blending or the perfect blending of 
uh, Sandman Catch Wrestling. We are actually probably next week. I just wanted to add a couple more videos to this. Um, the, we've, we've finished like 98% of a Sandman Catch Wrestling course. Um, cause actually, because you guys were asking for it. I had actually written the, uh, the curriculum for it long, like years ago. I just never filmed it. But then uh, we got such a great response from, like when I mentioned Sandman, in one of the videos that um, I just went ahead and filmed it. I want to add one more uh, technique. Actually, I want to add a couple more videos, like a little bit more detail, like one detailed video about uh, finishing the, what you guys would call like the outside ashi position, we call it just like step over toe hold uh, position. Um, um, how to really like make your heel hooks really tight. Um, so that, that's one video that I want, that I want to add. And then, um, another one for the, the takedown for when someone throws a roundhouse kick towards your body, like how to, how to properly catch it and how to take them down and then like follow through with either like a pin or submission. Um, so everything else is already filmed and, and ready to go. Um, I just want to add those two last, uh, details, uh, before I release it. Um, yeah, so thank you for being interested. This is actually like my favorite kickboxing style. So um, it's great that you guys are uh, like liking it. Like, I'm, like, I'm a two-time national champion in Sanza, so uh, I'm happy to talk about uh, about any of that if you guys have questions. Um, so yeah, of course, my favorite, my favorite styles are Sanza and catch wrestling. Um, so I could teach you how to blend them perfectly. What lifts are popular for increasing overall power? Um, let me see, um, it were two good questions. Uh, we're going to go for the lifting one first. Um, so a lot of times it, it is not the vanity muscles that are going to make you better, right? So not just doing bicep curls, it's usually the ones that involve, uh, multiple or larger muscle groups. That's what they call it. So doing those lifts, like, um, you know, like the deadlifts or the squats or, um, more of what people call the Olympic lifts, those really use your entire body um, at the, you know, to do the lift. So that really helps your body. Uh, it trains your body to work synergistically when you are, um, when you're competing, right? So then the other thing you want to think about beside, beyond those lifts, so those are main, main um, lifts that are going to help you just in general, uh, you just be stronger overall, but then you got to be thinking about um, what are some of these uh, sp like sport specific techniques or that you want to be training? Um, so for um, for catch wrestling in particular, uh, you definitely want to be doing stuff that tra that trains like your bridge technique, right? So you know, kind of like you're on your back, you can put your feet down and then try to work on the bridge. Um, you can also also too, where it's like um, like what I, a position I find myself in quite often. Because uh, I, I roll at a 10th Planet uh, Jiu Jitsu gym. So if people are coming at me like uh, in seated guard, right? Or they're butt scooting at me. Uh, so, uh, or if I take them down, right? And they, uh, they're they facing me and then I'll be kind of crouched over. But then I'm still doing kind of like row type techniques. So either I'm going to be pressing down on them, like trying to grab the head, trying to pull it towards me. So a lot of times it's either downward pressure with the arm or kind of scooping and pulling towards you, right? So you want to be training these type of row techniques, right? Or these down, so like uh, if you happen to have rubber bands or something um, or, or access to a gym, I know a lot of people um, don't have access to a gym right now because of the quarantine, uh, but if you have like a cable machine, uh, you know, where the, the cable is dropped down here and you've got a handle there, you can then pull down like all these types of down and in type of movements are going to be um, what you use a lot in grappling. Um, all right, let's see what was, the other, what was that other question someone asked. Uh, where is it? Uh, do you think aggression is more necessary than technique? Um, I think technique is the most important, right? Uh, and why I believe that is. Um, uh, because, because uh, a lot of times aggression will get you tired, right? 
So um, he just kind of, so j just think. So traditionally catch wrestling had no time limit. So one of the strategies was to tire your opponent out so that you can then use less energy, right? To pin them or to submit them. So uh, catch wrestling wasn't necessarily like the way you see amateur wrestling today where someone's like shooting in real fast and hard. Um, it wasn't quite like that. The strategy was different. Um, um, like, uh, again, like I said, it's like, uh, you're gonna, you're gonna try to wear them out. Right. So you have to have that, uh, that ability to kind of, uh, hang in there for, for like our matches are 20 minutes for our events. Um, so you gotta have to at least hang in there. And even so like, even with Eddie Bravo M invitational rules, it's like a 10 minute match. So, um, you, um, you gotta at least be able to last 10 minutes. Uh, unlike a lot of the, um, so like amateur wrestling was it like two, uh, three, two minute rounds. So, uh, that's a lot less time. So you can be really explosive. Uh, if, if your time limit is only two minutes, right? You can try to rack up points, right? And you, I mean, that's even gonna be, um, that's even gonna be like tiring in itself if you're just like explosive all the time for two minutes straight, that's, that's nuts, that's tiring, <laughs> that's tiring, right? So um, uh, technique, technique, especially in a catch wrestling match, right? So yeah, if you're gonna be doing amateur, um, yeah, you wanna train to be explosive for those the, those three periods, right? Um, but yeah, if you wanna be doing catch wrestling rules or even say like uh, grappling rules, like they're, um, you know, with like Eddie Bravo's rules, 10 minutes, you gotta be ready for 10 minutes. And then on top of that, if it goes uh, to the overtimes, you gotta be ready for the overtimes, right? So um, it's really about the technique and muscular endurance, right? That's, that's what you gotta be thinking about. All right, so let's see the next question here. Let me try to pull it back up. Uh, someone asked about the upcoming uh, video course. Uh, yes, we're going to cover the front kick defense. All right, so I'll teach you how to catch that and how to basically have your guards up, like your arms up to, you know, just like a regular fighting position and then how, how that catch is done uh, and then how to follow through. Uh, so you're going to try to take them down and basically try to follow through. Um, yeah, let's see about New York. It'd be great to have, have something there. I mean, if you're, at, if you have a, a, a gym, you know, let us know. We'd definitely like to be in touch or, or work with you. Oh yeah, yeah, you're, you're welcome to, uh, you're, you're welcome, right? Um, so that, that's kind of like what the course is going to be. So we're going to have like defense. So this will be the, the sound the catch wrestling combination course. Um, so yeah, we're going to have defense against a uh, high roundhouse kick. So towards your head, um, and then also towards your body. And then also, um, uh, to like the, the different types of kicks. So like the front push kick or what people call teep in, um, in Muay Thai. Um, and then also the side thrust kick, which you'll see more commonly in um, in Sanda in particular, right? Sometimes you'll see um, uh, see that in some kind of karate styles as well. Um, so, and then the other thing we're gonna have is uh, takedowns against knee strikes, uh, and then also from if if someone somehow they get behind you, um, how to counter them with using basically like a lot of these techniques and one of the reasons why I was really drawn to catch wrestling is like a lot of these samba and catch wrestling techniques are virtually the same right so um, we're gonna have a lot of the that um, let me see uh, yeah and so with our CWA Academy we are having uh, certifications or like um, affiliation type things but yeah you, we have to make sure that the, uh, the you know the real thing and you're not mixing up some pro wrestling stuff or, or whatever. So we you have to finish your, uh, the fundamentals courses uh, first, right? So that's kind of the way we're gonna do it. It's not like some kind of uh, just pay us and then you automatically. So we, we really are about quality. Uh, so yeah, we don't care about, <laughs> I personally don't care about um, uh, like say like trying to sell as much as I can, but uh, I really am protective 
actually of catch wrestling. Um, you know, I studied with uh, with the Snake Pit Wigan. Um, I've also studied privately with Billy Robinson as well because I care about this, right? I care about preserving this. Um, so, uh, like, associating Catch Wrestling Alliance or myself um, with somebody else has to be someone who's um, really, like, caring about it and uh, really sincere and serious about this. And so learning how to do the do it the... The, the proper way, like um, like uh, the way the Brits say, like this is proper wrestling. So we want someone who's really going to be uh, thinking about this in the proper way. Um, let me see. What exposure? Basically, have to get like what. So the question was like, what exposure do do I? What exposure? What kind of exposure does catch wrestling need to really uh, get it to the next level? Um, uh, we, well, this is kind of an interesting uh, situation. Situation, and this is kind of like the the topic of of this video. It's like, so say if we have people competing in MMA, and uh, say if they are winning, I mean, does that is that like the best way to prove? that catch wrestling is the best is that or should we have like people winning because the other people talk about oh winning an adcc right the biggest uh grappling competition i mean is that better or is that mma better or or we have to have people winning and everything right so um what does show uh the best grappling right um i guess maybe i'm kind of leaning more towards adcc or um um like more towards that way. The other, th uh, going back to your question though in particular, um, we have had like several uh, different organizations try to start um, uh, like amateur, like professional, am professional like folk style type rules, um, like wrestling, um, like events. Um, they all were not successful. Um, so um, I think there's um, a bit of, education that we still have to kind of be putting out there for with regards to catch wrestling in order to get it to uh, break the to the next level um, do i have a college degree yes actually i have three so i have a bachelor's a master's of science and a phd so uh yes i have three <laughs> uh, let me see the next question I wish I could have trained with Billy uh, when he was when I was when he was living. Um, let me see. Hold. Oh yeah, Mr. Miyato. Um, yeah, he's a nice guy. Uh, we also have a really uh, good friend uh, who worked very closely with Billy as well in in uh, Kyoto, Japan. Osamu Matsunami. He also. Um, went back and forth between uh, Japan and Wigan to train. Um, he's also like a really good person to to train with. He learned very closely um, uh, with both Roy and Billy. And so and also say the other thing about Osamu is that he because he kept going to Wigan and this was like a long time ago, um, he also got to meet who is the man who's considered the best um, um, catch wrestler out of Wigan that was Billy Joyce so um, Billy Joyce was still alive at that time so Osama got a chance to mix in with all those people let me see uh, where is my acupuncture practice located I'm in Culver City I'm inside it right now this is where, <laughs> this is where I'm filming this in my office um, let me see Gotcha, Farmer Burns. Uh, I don't know, man. It's uh, why well, you probably want to learn from Farmer Burns because he was the guy who taught Gotch, right? So uh, you probably want to want to learn it straight from the horse's mouth, right? Even though Gotch is like great. So like, say if if Farmer Burns wasn't around and you only had to train with Gotch, yeah, go with Gotch. I mean, so um, uh, but yeah, I think I'd probably go with Farmer Burns. Let me see. Uh, thoughts on Luta Libre? 
Um, kind of, I, like people do ask about it quite often. So I've, I've checked out some of the some of the videos um, of it, and um, uh, the thing is, is like a lot of times they are kind of going onto their back. So um, it does look more like jujitsu than than wrestling or catch wrestling. Um, so that's kind of like one of the stylistic differences that um, that kind of happen between. Um, uh, between catch wrestling and luta libre, or um, yeah, so I think that's kind of like the big difference. I, I, again, I prefer catch wrestling. I really like the whole wrestling oriented thing, where it's like if you do get taken back onto your back, um, you try to get out, you try to reverse from there, and not necessarily fight from there. I, I ultimately think it's a, a, a like it, with regards to physics and gravity. I mean, it's not necessarily the best. Uh, way to to go like just to be face up and uh, you're gonna have to not only bear um, their weight right you gotta like say in an MMA situation you're gonna have to fight against their their striking attempts also to um, if you're in a grappling situation I mean um, you're gonna be fighting off their submission attempts as well you got a lot of be- you got a lot better leverage if you're on top all right, let's uh, try to scroll through some more of these questions. Um, oh yeah, I really like Sakuraba. So, um, from what I understand, um, so Billy Robinson was in his only coach. Um, he also got some coaching from Roy Wood, which who is my other uh, catch wrestling coach. He's the the head coach. Um, um, of the snake pit Wigan. Um, so yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so I think because of that, I got a chance, I actually, I got, had many chances to hear, uh, where, like, um, uh, where Saku doesn't necessarily do the technique to their, to their liking. Right. But, um, uh, I think that's, that's going to be the coach's point of view always, right. You teach something one way and then you see them, even though they're successful at beating, the Gracie family, right? They're, um, uh, the coach is still going to be like, oh, you, you didn't do it properly, even though you still won. That's kind of, uh, both of them kind of said stuff like that. Um, let me see. Do I use my degrees when it comes to the knowledge that you use to teach catch wrestling? Um, uh, yes, because I also actually, I teach um, acupuncture for uh, acupuncture university here in Los Angeles. So, uh, yeah, like, um, Teaching is kind of a universal, what regardless of the the what you're teaching, right? You gotta gotta guide the student from uh, the novice uh, level all the way to the expert level. So you gotta try to think of, of strategies of, of how to do that for each individual student. But then, uh, what is too like you don't want to give them information uh, that's too advanced for them. Also, you don't want to give them too much information all at once that's just going to make them tune out right, and then not learn. Um, and I think that was one of the things with a lot of my university professors where it's like, uh, they just really want to pile on the work. Uh, so everyone tunes out. Right. So, uh, so it, it, that can kind of, uh, uh, decrease the, the learning, right. It's usually about like, uh, giving them enough that they can digest, right. And then apply. Right. Um, Uh, which catch wrestler would, would like what what story would be the best uh, would make the best movie? Um, oh man, you actually have a lot of great stories. Um, I mentioned um, recently uh, with Gotch Frank Gotch, of course, right? He actually tra- he he changed a lot of uh, the way we view um, uh, like ath- athletics and sponsorships, right? So. Gotch became the biggest athlete in the United States in his time. And so then all these brands, they try to get their name associated with Gotch, right? So in a way, Gotch then became synonymous with quality, right? So um, according to my understanding, it's like Gotch was this main one that created the way we understand uh, sponsorships, where it's like, say, like Nike nowadays, uh, they find like a great athlete and then they work together. That wasn't so much the case uh, before Gotch. According
according to my understanding, right? And you can kind of look back and see that um, uh, there's even a lot of like these old newspaper ads and stuff like that where it's like uh, the most random products were getting endorsed by Frank Gotch. And so, yeah, of course, they were they were paying paying him for all his endorsements and stuff. Um, oh, advantages for female uh, grapplers. What advantages do female grapplers have in catch wrestling? Kind of like what we were talking about earlier, where it's like, you don't stay on the bottom, right? Don't get smashed by a larger person. Um, like, like one of the, one of the classmates or one of the uh, younger women who, who train at the 10th Planet school that I, I roll at, um, and she got like steamrolled in her last um, competition by a much larger opponent. Um, but the, the larger opponent didn't really have uh, a lot of technique, right? They were just bigger, right? So um, that's the thing. Um, a lot of times in jujitsu, they might, they, at least at some people at certain levels, they'll, they'll think, okay, I, I got rolled, up, rolled over onto my back. I'm going to see what I can do from from my back, um, but in catch wrestling, you know, if you get rolled over onto your back, you really gotta work on fighting out, right? So, um, I think that would be the biggest advantage that a female um, uh, could take from catch wrestling, right? Getting up from being on the bottom, right? So, um, we're also seeing, um, say like, taking it back to the whole MMA topic, right? Again, like if you're on the bottom, you could be bearing all that weight plus all these attempted strikes and uh, submission attempts that's um that's a lot to have to take right um do you we think that we can have um more competitions this summer uh yeah we just have to see what like what where we are we're able to, or what opens back up right so it's all based off of uh, what Rona's telling, what, what Rona dictates, right? <laughs> so uh, definitely are inter interested mostly in the safety of of people, right? So of the competitors. Um, so we have to kind of go along with um, with that. So, um, but yeah, we definitely want to keep the ball rolling. Um, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Let's see if there's any other questions. Cool. Oh, um, thank you, uh, Chitali Morris, Harrell Her Morris, for uh, for joining our channel. So yeah, we um, uh, just kind of to let everyone know. So YouTube just gave us the permission to offer channel membership. So uh, if you do become a member, um, then we offer even more detailed uh, instructionals in there. So there's actually a lot of videos that over that we've accumulated over the years that. Um, we just haven't released for various reasons. So um, I, I think virtually all of them are um, released now. Like the, the old backlog that we have, uh, they're released in the member section. Um, I've also been trying to do um, more detailed um, um, instructionals for members. So we've been putting that in there. Um, uh, so that's in the member section. Um, let me see. So we are going, let me see. How, I don't understand your question. How far can you get if you just train in catch wrestling and not BJJ? Um, I personally, I think you can get very far. It, it's just, uh, you have to focus on the wrestling aspect. So if you have that kind of top down approach, um, the, a lot of these wrestling fundamentals, you can, uh, go very, very far, right? So you can basically escape a lot of situations if, um, if you get stuck in certain situations. Uh, even if someone uh, comes at you uh, in seated guard, you're in a grappling situation, right? They're trying to mess with your legs. A lot of times using that whole um, kind of pinning mentality, you, you'll, you'll find yourself passing guard a lot, right? Because you're, you're, uh, you're doing a lot of pressure, what's called like pressure passing, Right, so you're applying all that, uh, and quite often you'll, you'll be able to get past their leg lock attempts. So you're get pa getting past their legs, so therefore you're getting past the leg lock attempts, right? Um, a lot of people are getting really good at barambolo uh, attacks, so you can kind of think, 
kind of try to convert that Barambolo principle to um, the the whole um, uh, like in wrestling we call it a grambi, right? So people aren't really doing grambies or, or Barambolo in amateur wrestling, but the principle is there with the grambi rolls, right? So um, if you're used to people doing grambies, right, and and so then you're used to then trying to control. Uh, the them when they're trying to ground be roll, then you you're going to be uh, in a better position when you go up against someone who's doing barambolo, right? So you really uh, and again it kind of comes down to really keeping that pressure on uh, when they get their legs under you and they're going to be trying to maybe roll in, uh, to an uh, armbar or, or a lot of times they roll, they'll try to like, <laughs> I wish I can kind of show you right now but like, so a lot of times they're going to be rolling barambolo style maybe trying to um, uh, pull an arm in right between their legs, trying to go for that arm bar. A lot of times stacking them, you know, really keeping that pressure, getting your head in between their, their, their feet, right? It's like really try to dive, dive in there because they're, they're opening, they're offering openings as they roll, right? Um, so a lot of times getting through those legs um, with the whole idea of pressure and pinning, uh, that'll get you past those legs. Um, I don't know, actually, you guys are asking a bunch of questions, so let me, uh, let me try to... Um, I get back to so um, Chitali is a TKD teacher. Oh, oh wait, I'm teaching grappling. Oh wait. <laughs> uh, any tips for traditional martial artists? Um, oh yeah, no problem. I actually have to. In LA is like a really great place. We have so many people um, from all all over the world. So. You get used to all kinds of all kinds of names, right? Let me see. Um, any tips for traditional mar martial artists? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, traditional martial arts. Actually, I think traditional martial artists embrace catch wrestling a lot more uh, than you'll have some of these mainstream martial arts styles. Um, uh, I, I think they're always looking, or the traditional martial artist is always, at least in my in my opinion, it's totally my opinion that. They're always looking for what's the most effective thing that they can use, not only for self-defense, um, but also what is like a fun sport as well. Um, but with kind of the whole idea of practicality in mind. So yeah, yeah, catch wrestling principles will help. And so um, I think you can, with, with TKD, I mean, they can still blend, but you have to start getting used to, uh, if you're going to be doing kind of like a, a TKD blend or like a, it's, it's going to start turning into like the whole samba kind of look where um, you're going to have to get used to catching kicks. And even though, yeah, it seems, I don't, I don't know if you're used to that already, but, um, you know, I know in Taekwondo that they're, they throw kicks very fast and like, uh, you know, rapidly at, at the opponent. Um, you're going to be able to catch them. That's kind of one of the things you'll be surprised at. If you're not already catching them, them already, um, there's ways to safely catch even like these really strong kicks um i'll probably put since you're a member uh, I'll, I'll i'll put one of those videos in the member section for you um because uh, yeah because I, I already had it filmed <laughs> so i'll probably try to upload one for you um within the next couple days or so okay uh, so yeah that's kind of what's gonna happen you basically get used to catching those kicks getting used to following through getting that takedown and then uh, you can either follow through by passing their guard right pinning them or um, you know, going for a submission. Quite often, if you if you take them down, you still have their leg. Uh, you, you can go for that. Go for that. Uh, that heel hook, right? Or go for that knee bar. Or uh, totally up to you. Um, let me see. What information helped you accelerate your learning when it came to grappling? A lot of times, it's that down top down approach. So if you are on top of someone. You don't really want to have your hips pointing towards the ground, or you actually want to have like so, kind of belly down. Okay, uh, what happens, or what I see a lot from uh, like people who are beginners, the if they get onto the ground, they're kind of on top of someone and they're kind of leaning. So like uh, they might even kind of like uh, be kind of like this. So if you're if you so imagine you are laying face up, right? So on your back, face up towards and if I'm just always just like leaning this way, a lot of times uh, my my feet they have to like they have to be spread right to try to 
counter, but if I'm like this, a lot of times it's a little bit weaker. So a lot of times if you're going for that whole like a, like side control position, right, in jiu-jitsu, um, a lot of times it is better to have this kind of broad side down, right? So you gotta always have to envision if you're if you're in a scramble, getting back to that that kind of belly down position, right? Ideally with them under you, right? Um, if they get out from under you, you're gonna go back to your uh, your defensive position, right? Like referee's position. Again, that's also kind of like this belly down. Your legs are um, underneath you. You can stand up if you want. Um, kind of having that, also defending your your neck and your head from uh, if you're doing grappling, you know, you're gonna have to defend from chokes and stuff, or catch wrestling, you have to defend from the face locks and stuff. Um, so that's kind of the the idea, where it's like we, if you're scrambling, kind of get used to having that pelvis belly down position, not so much on your hips, because you can be teetered um, either back and forth easily, right? So then you have to you're gonna have to have more active. Oh, that's the other thing, more active feet, active footwork. So even though you're on the ground, you're grappling on the ground. Um, don't just like turtle up and like just be on your knees. Uh, you, the whole idea of being more active where you can pull off these really cool scrambles and stuff is you're actually on the balls of your feet, right? So uh, if you're up against a really good grappler, then um, you're then able to move and counter their counter. That That's the whole thing. You, you don't really see very many uh, catch wrestling counters where uh, somehow you pull off some amazing counter when you're like you're not really moving your feet your feet are involved and so you got to make sure that they they stay involved uh, when you're on the ground so that's like not just being only uh, balled up in a, a turtle type position all right so you're going to have to be creating these openings using your feet and of course your arms but uh, feet are kind of like the the missing the missing link all right So the, oh, so I was like, uh, is there much difference between the Lancashire style of wrestling and uh, what's taught in Wigan? Well, um, that is the Lancashire style of wrestling. So Wigan is located in the basically kind of Lancashire County. Right? I'm not sure if they use that word county in England or not, but uh, the Lancashire region of, of England. And that's where catch wrestling evolved right, over time. Um, so like the most famous and still existing school is, uh, the Snake Pit Wigan. So, um, and it, so it just happened to be in that village of Wigan. Uh, yeah, and it's actually called the village. I, I, <laughs> the last time I was there, that's when I saw the, the sign where it says, welcome to the village of Wigan. Uh, but yeah, it's all in the Lancashire region. And I believe nowadays it's called like a greater Manchester. Manchester is like the mega city that's the closest um, um, so yeah, that it is, so Lancashire, so, so that's the thing, so you might have heard these different words for catch wrestling, so you have catch wrestling, Lancashire wrestling, um, catch is catch cam, um, those are kind of synonymous, right, and I'm sure the different, and I know that the different schools had, uh, their own, like, takes on, on some of the things, but the main thing was that, um, you have, uh, uh, a real top-down approach you're really focusing on pinning the person uh, you can submit them or um, really kind of uh, use your the pain techniques to get them to flip over onto their back and a lot of these matches were done out in the fields they have a lot of beautiful rolling green fields out there um, so a lot of times the matches were held outside um, and that's, so that's the other thing where it's like uh, you're not it's not uh, this is more of the difference between the Lancashire style of catch wrestling and to modern uh, amateur wrestling. Um, you're going to see, because uh, modern amateur is done on the mat, um, you're going to see all these things, like a little bit more of like knee over toe, blast double type stuff. Um, you're, um, you, you didn't necessarily want to do that in a field. Um, yeah, blending catch wrestling and dirty boxing. Yeah, great. That's great. That's a should be pretty easy to blend. Yeah, because like uh, if you're already clinched up, you should be able to uh, get some takedowns. Uh, the other thing you want to add is like level changing, uh, because if you're dirty boxing in MMA, 
uh, and you're not level changing well, a lot of times that can open you up to guillotined, right? Getting guillotined, right? Getting choked, right? Is it hard to transition from freestyle wrestling into catch wrestling? Um, yes, yeah, <laughs> but it, 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 you can do it. You can totally do it. The, one of the main differences is the whole parterre idea where you kind of pancake, you flatten out, right? Um, just don't do that. So you want to go uh, onto your knees. Uh, don't worry about the whole points. System. That's the thing. So getting the whole point system out of your head is like major. Like, I think that's probably the largest um, a hurdle that you'd have to get over uh, uh, if you transition over to catch wrestling from freestyle. Um, yeah, and you, you see that too. Like they say even people who, who come to learn from me um, who, who've been doing jiu-jitsu for the longest time. Um, you see, or I used to teach at a Cobrinha uh, affiliate school. I'd like, um, like quite often they're like, oh, is, is that technique legal in IBJJF or, you know, stuff like that. It's usually this whole point system uh, rule set that you have to overcome. So yeah, for someone even uh, ask me those questions, it's like it means that it's like that, that whole rule set, whether it be jujitsu or uh, freestyle, it's already been really ingrained into their brain. So uh, that it's so ingrained that they're asking questions like, oh, is this okay? Or like, well, in catch wrestling, there's no problem. Um, so I, that's probably the biggest thing to overcome. It's all about continuously wrestling, no, no ref is going to stand you up, you know, you don't have to worry about the, them blowing the whistle for, for some reason, or, or you're also, too, like, um, since you don't have to worry about points, um, like in freestyle, right, you're not going to get, uh, you're not going to get teched, right, so you're not going to, uh, they're not, like, if they roll you over a few times, and you're not submitted or pinned, you're still in the match, right, so, so keep going, like, so don't worry about, oh, man, he rolled me over, you know, like, I didn't just give up some points or, you know, so I think that that overcoming the, the ingrained point system is probably the, the biggest thing. All right. Let me see here. I think my, oh yeah, my battery is getting close to dying. Um, I don't have it plugged in, but let me see if I can answer another question real quick. Catch wrestling for law enforcement. Yes. Yes, you have to, it's really about controlling people uh, if that that be the case. So the main thing is like being peaceful and being able to control people without um, uh, without like hurting them and uh, resorting to using excessive force. I think catch wrestling is perfect for that. Let me see. Oh uh, yeah, a, yeah, ADCC um, becoming more like catch wrestling. Uh, a little bit. It's still catch wrestling is still different because I think um, a lot of times when we, we hear about ADCC or even like wrestling in grappling, it's still like the whole amateur kind of point of view where it's like uh, the freestyle or folk style uh, mentality of wrestling, uh, and so that's why there is they're trying to bridge these two things that aren't as related as jujitsu and catch wrestling. I think um, or actually even I don't know if like you would say that the mentality of jiu-jitsu and catch wrestling are, are too intertwined, but I think there's probably more similarities because of uh, the whole the whole idea of submissions, right? But whereas, like, so we have the amateur wrestling where it's, like, going for pins or going for points, um, that, in a way, can kind of make it the mentality a little bit further away from uh, jiu-jitsu. All right, I think I'm going to have to uh, shut it down here because uh, I think my battery is going to die. Uh, but uh, thank you everyone for your questions. Hopefully, um, uh, if you guys are into it, we'll just keep doing this and then um, I'll try to announce it next time. So um, I just wanted to give you that news from my son, the coach in China. Uh, he hasn't really been too vocal recently. He's been doing other things. So it's cool that he's back into uh, Sanda. And uh, uh, all right, all right. Okay, so thank you for watching. All right.